the resources that they can that they need locally and why they're depending on federal dollars. If we don't fix that problem, you're absolutely right. There's going to be huge disappointment coming down the road. And we cannot continue to just fix the problem by looking to Washington, D.C. You and I, and you know, we've spoken off air many times about just the, the spirit of Oregonians, especially the people in the North Counties. How, you know, when Lewis and Clark came out here and, and when other people established this part of the state, these were some of the most enterprising, innovative, pioneering, uh, independent people our country had ever seen. I mean, they had to be. They had the furthest to come. And and when they did that, they, they weren't looking over their shoulders asking, okay, well, Washington, D.C., what else are you going to do to help me? No, they got their fingernails dirty, and they and, and they and they you know they got they got into the soil, they got into the natural resources, and they managed them properly and responsibly because they recognize, hey, we've been blessed with some great renewable natural resources here. And when we need to recognize as Oregonians what our assets are, what strengths we have, and we need to maximize those for economic development, for job creation, and, and also because it's just, it's just good policy to become more independent here in Oregon and not rely on people you know across the sea and across the country to look after us. No, I agree with that. I agree with that totally. And we also, I think uh, it's important to say, uh, you know, that we, economic development means a lot of things. It means recreational uses of our natural resources. It, it, and it means doing some logging, sustainable logging, and, and things that are friendly to the environment. So it's not just about cutting down trees and clear-cutting and all that sort of thing. That's not the point. We have it down to a science with, with what we have here in Oregon. And many, many years of and dollars have gone into to doing that science and doing that work. And if I could add, and uh, you know, later today after this interview, next thing I'm doing is I'm heading out into the forest. I'm taking a tour of the, with the forest industry, uh, and I want to see exactly what they do and how they do it and what what the federal government is doing to prevent them from doing their skills and their jobs well and see how I can be more helpful to this industry here in Oregon as a whole. Well, and, and how they're stewards of the forest. Absolutely. And, yeah. I, and I have total trust in their ability to be stewards of the forest. It's, it's not only their current income, it's, their, it's the next generation's income. And they want to be good stewards and, and administer uh, and, and, uh, and manage the forest properly. It's, it works to their self-interest. So can you talk about the debt ceiling a little bit? That's a mm. big topic. <laughs> and, um, you know, I saw somebody wearing a hat the other day when I was in Portland, and it said, it's okay, our kids will pay. And I thought, oh, brother, mm. that doesn't sound good. But, you know, in the end of the day, that's probably what's going to happen. No, you know, it, it, it's interesting you bring that up about kids. Uh, m- maybe you know this, Anne, but uh, what prompted me to run for Congress uh, originally was my, my youngest son, uh, who is now 15 years old, uh, he and I were watching a television show. And uh, again, I was just, you know, I was participating in community activities. I was r- trying to run our small business well, which we thankfully have been able to do, and had no intention of running for Congress. But we're watching this show, my son and I, and it's about the growing national debt that we're incurring. And this is, mind you, two years ago now. And uh, after it went to a commercial, after this very sobering story, my, my son turns to me, and I didn't even think he was paying attention, quite, quite frankly. He says, hey, Dad, he says, am I going to have to pay for all that? And that was, a, that was one of those moments where you look at your child and you think, you know what, they're not joking. Uh, there was no smile on his face. It was deep concern. And I, as a father of, of three boys, you know, I thought, you know, this is a very serious question coming from a young mind. And so I said to him, Chad, you know, yes, you are going to have to pay for that if the adults don't start acting like grown-ups. And from that moment on, at the risk of sounding overly dramatic, I began to give serious thought to what I am doing and what I should be doing to fix this problem and to play a greater voice in my community and in my state. And as it relates to the current debt ceiling crisis, as they called it, um, you know, the fact of it is we should have never gotten to that point. Why did we have to raise the debt ceiling? It's because we borrow money we don't have. The more you borrow that you can't pay back, the more, the more debt you obviously incur and the more you are beholden to your creditors. And that's a very serious situation to our country. It becomes a, uh, an issue of national security and certainly economic development now and in the future. 
And you look at all the things that we want as Americans, the services that we rely on the government to provide, uh, the Social Security payments that we must make, the Medicare payments we must make to our seniors each and every month. Those things are now at risk because we are borrowing money from countries that someday may decide, you know what, I don't know if you're very, very good credit risk anymore. We're not going to keep lending you money. And then where are we going to get the funds? The fact is we had to raise the debt ceiling because we have to pay back our bills. America does not renege on its promises. And for those who might argue that we shouldn't have raised the debt ceiling, well, no one will ever know for certain because we actually did it. Some would argue that we should not have done it and we, we would have been able to pay our bills anyway. I don't, I don't subscribe to that thinking. I think we had to do it for the good of the country because we have to say to people and, and, and governments and entities that want to invest in America, when you do so, we will pay you back. But if we wouldn't have raised the debt ceiling, we would have become a bad, we would have become a bad investment for, for now and in the future. And that would have been crippling to our economy. We would, have, we would have hurt an untold number of people if we wouldn't have raised the debt ceiling. I don't like that we had to do it. Uh, I, I wish, I hope that we don't have to do it again, but we have to remember that that debt ceiling was was raised not because, not for future spending, but for spending that has already taken place. And we just have to pay our bills. We have to be, you know, we uh, the full faith and credit of the United States cannot be put at risk. So now what do we do moving forward? We have to find people in government who know how to stop borrowing money we don't have who have to think more creatively, who have to work more collaboratively to find solutions. And as I said to you earlier, we can't have more of the same. If we continue to send people back to Washington, D.C., who are just of a different name but of the same ilk that we have, we're going to continue to to suffer through these problems, and we're not going to give our kids the kind of future that we've all had. So I want to touch also on on the banking industry, because there's a lot of small businesses that would like to develop, like to expand, like to start, like to start up. And and they go to the bank and the bank will say, we sell money. You know, you basically have to have a whole bunch of equity or something you can put up if we're going to give you money because there's that risk. It's not that some of the banks don't have money. It's that it's just too tough. And I know people that would probably like to start a business, probably like to do something. And they they're just even afraid to walk in the door because of what they've heard. Yeah, I think this is an example. This this is the result of of a Congress that claims to have good intentions, but they overreached. And this happens too often. The pendulum swings way too far to one side when when a crisis happens in our country. We, we need, frankly, more reasoned thought. And what you saw after the latest, you know, after this whole financial crisis we've been going through for the last three or four years, is you saw one piece of legislation called the Dodd-Frank Bill. The Dodd-Frank bill is a a new financial regulations placed on banks and other lending institutions and financial advisors, etc. I've spoken to many of them, especially in the small business community, and they say the Dodd-Frank bill is untenable for us. We can't comply with everything. It's too expensive. We're going to have to shut down or it's becoming so difficult for us to lend because of the restrictions on lending through the Dodd-Frank bill that now my local small businesses are suffering. You know, I worry about the community banks in Clatsop and and, in Columbia County. I I really worry about their ability to survive this crisis because of of the new stack of regulation that they're still trying to figure out. And if you don't, again, as I've said earlier, if you don't know what regulation means, the best and safest thing to do, unfortunately, is to go sit on the sidelines and wait till the wait till the rule book is determined and that is not good for this economy so we had we've been overregulated and uh that needs to be that needs to be shrunk responsibly i might add if we're going to see this economy grow again i we've kind of run out of time this morning so i i do want to make a point that you told me before we walked in to do this show that if you're the congressman for district 1 that you would have a presence in our county. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I've committed to to Clatsop County that uh, if the good voters here will elect me, uh, we will have a congressional office in Clatsop County. Boy, that would sure be a switch. We we just we need it. Uh, this this county deserves it. There's so much happening here. There's so much uh, that needs to happen here that uh, we need a voice right here locally, and I'll be that voice and I'll I'll be that ear as well. And so, if your voters, excuse me, if your listeners will help uh, help our campaign, it's CornelisForCongress dot com. We encourage them to get on our website, find out how they can volunteer, make a contribution, uh, and communicate with our campaign. We'd love to have their support.
Well, I want to thank you for, for coming on this morning, Rob. And I want to thank everybody for listening this morning on 94.9 and KSWB 840 AM. If you have comments regarding the show, feel free to email me at ann at ansamuelson.com.